process. Plate. Hello, the That scene in Casablanca forever immortalized Paul Henry in the minds of moviegoers. But there was so much more to my father's career than just the man in the white suit who flies away with Ingrid Bergman. Right before playing the role of freedom fighter Victor Laszlo, he made cinema history by lighting two cigarettes, handing one to Betty Davis in the romantic hit Now Voyager a film which firmly established him as the epitome of the suave, continental lover. Initially, my father resisted doing Casablanca because he felt audiences would be rooting for Bogart to end up with Bergman and would undermine what now Voyager had done for his career. He needn't have worried because his talent and versatility avoided typecasting and carried him through a long professional life as actor, producer, and director. Before arriving in Hollywood in 1941, my father performed lead roles on the stage and in German language films. But because of his anti-fascist beliefs and hatred for Hitler, he moved to Great Britain in 1935. It was here that he made his first English-speaking film in 1939's Goodbye Mr. Chips, billed under his real name, Paul von Herrenried. His Hollywood debut was as a French RAF pilot being pursued by enemy agents in Joan of Paris. Then came now Voyager in Casablanca, beginning his long association with Warner Brothers, who cast him in a string of melodramas, cashing in on the romantic leading man image they were trying to establish. I see you for what you are, and what you are pleases me. In Devotion, he played a minister involved with the famous Bronte sisters between two worlds as a suicidal pianist bound for the hereafter. In our time, as a Polish count battling Nazi invaders. Of human bondage, as a club-footed medical student obsessed with a vulgar waitress. The conspirators, as a freedom fighter involved with Nazi intrigue with Hedy Lamarr. And deception, as a tortured cellist tormented by jealousy. Picture fit to look at when he visits you. And the finest piano in the world to listen to. And the most expensive clothes. He gives those to everybody. I told you how I came by those. Oh, yes, from pupils. Wealthy pupils. Yes! Unfortunately, he told me you never had a pupil. As a man who off-screen was very athletic and possessed a wonderful sense of humor, he soon grew tired of these gloomy roles and longed for a change of pace. So in 1945, he approached Jack Warner with his idea for a project about a lusty, swashbuckling buccaneer. Warner informed him that when he wanted a pirate, he'd call Errol Flynn. Undaunted, my father took the project to Herman Mankiewicz at RKO, who fashioned a first-rate script. But she happens to be more than just a woman to me. She's a skull and has needed settling. You're out of your mind. No compliments, please. The result? The Spanish Main was a box office smash that gave him the chance to show off his athletic abilities and the lighter side to his acting skills. As a young girl, I was thrilled to see him with his blonde wavy hair and blue-gray eyes, all captured in rich technicolor. Although I was confused as to how a man six feet three inches tall could fit into that small studio model ship. In 1947, my father went to MGM for Song of Love, the biopic of composer Robert Schumann, opposite Katharine Hepburn, who he loved working with. Coming from Vienna, music was a very important part of his life, so this was a picture he greatly enjoyed making. My father played villains quite well also. In the film noir, The Scar, which he also produced, he actually plays two. Like a good many film artists, my father was caught up by the notorious House Un-American Activities Committee. So as a result, was forced to reinvent his career again in the 1950s, during which he spent more time behind the camera directing for both feature films and television. One of his best outings as director was the thriller Dead Ringer, starring his old friend Betty Davis, and in a supporting role, yours truly. I'm terribly sorry, madam. He worked all the scenes in advance, plotting camera movements, angles, close-ups, etc., and always employing the newest equipment and techniques. I hope you will consider me your equal. 
Of course, he still continued to act when a part came along that interested him. He enjoyed working with his friend Dean Martin in 10,000 Bedrooms, where he played the flamboyant artist who tries to sell his bizarre sculptures to the wealthy hotel magnate, played by Dean. As you can see, there were many facets to Paul Henry's talent, and it thrills and delights me to know that those talents are being rediscovered and appreciated. What would my father say to all of this? He'd probably show that charming, handsome smile of his and say, Shall we just have a cigarette on it? For Turner Classic Movies, I'm Monica Henried.